call the member for Melton. Uh, thank you, Acting Speaker, and I arise today to contribute to the discussions on the amendments regarding pill testing to the Drugs, Poisons and Controlled Substance, Substances Amendment Pill Testing Bill 2024. Uh, and before I go on, I just want to commend um, the contributions by all of the members, uh, but I do want to single one out, and that's the member for Frankston yesterday, who was so passionate uh, during his contribution. Uh, but all of the contributions have been fantastic, and the fundamental issue of this bill, as the member for Footscray just said, it's about saving lives, uh, and young lives at that, mainly young lives, because that's the majority of people that are, are popping these pills and, and generally at festivals. Um, people know my background in paramedicine. I don't know if anyone in this uh, chamber has ever, uh, I know the member for Footscray has witnessed a drug overdose, but has ever tried to resuscitate someone that's had a drug overdose. So I'll describe it to people uh, and um, you just picture it. So what you have is you have a person, whether they be young or older, um, that might have popped a pill or a mixture of pills. And that's just someone having a good time and acting normal until they pop the pill and then within a few minutes or within a half an hour, you see that they have changed. Their demeanour has changed. Some of them will become unconscious. Uh, and then the most of these pills um, depress respiration. So the first sign of seriousness in these issues is this person is on the ground, generally unconscious, non-breathing. breathing, And of course, if you stop breathing, it's a pretty serious issue. Pretty serious issue to your brain cells, let me tell you, for the length of time, depending on how long you're not breathing for. Hopefully someone there will try and assist that person in, in trying to, let's say, resuscitate. Um, so what would happen is if you stop breathing and you stop breathing for a considerable period of time, then your heart will stop and you'll go into full cardiac arrest. Sometimes people don't notice that someone's on the ground in cardiac arrest. They think they're asleep. Sometimes they'll become cyanide, so they'll become blue in colour. Again, they're not breathing. So of course, you try and resuscitate that person. And if we're fortunate enough to get defibrillation to them, proper resuscitation, whether an ambulance arrives, um, you can be quite fortunate in resuscitating those people. If there is naloxone available, um, it is an amazing drug, and I don't, don't know if anyone's ever seen the efforts of naloxone when it's administered. Um, if it is done by IM or IV, as AMBOS would do it, um, people instantly would sit up. They, they would come straight out of their unconsciousness and would sit up. Some of them would be quite aggressive. Um, if it's intranasal, it might take a little bit longer. Um, that doesn't mean they don't need ongoing medical treatment. They do, and they need observation. Some of them will get up and wander off. They'll take off uh, in their aggressive tone uh, because they've had an overdose, you've upset that process for them, they've got this anti-overdose drug, naloxone, and they're quite angry about it. Not quite normal, of course, but quite angry about it. But the unfortunate thing is that we don't save everyone in these overdoses. And I don't know if anyone's ever had an experience to tell a family member, I'm sorry, we couldn't resuscitate your child or couldn't resuscitate your relative. And it's pretty damn hard to go and tell a family member or a friend or a bystander that might have been at the festival with a young person that your friend is no longer going to be with you. Um, so they're the experiences of someone overdosing and they're the experiences of people that will try and assist uh, in trying to um, you know, pr provide support to those uh, people that have overdosed but even save their lives. And that's fundamentally what this issue is about. We don't want them to get into that situation of overdosing. Right? What we're trying to do here with pill testing is to prevent that and to prevent the tragic outcome with some of them, and that is not surviving. So it would be remiss of us in this place to assume we have the power to stop drug use. Of course we don't uh, across this state. And let me say, while we talk about pill testing, we seem to focus on the younger generation. Um, the younger generation, don't, they're not the only ones that have trouble with drugs. 
The general community have trouble with drugs, and we're talking about prescribed medications. There's more overdoses through prescribed medications over the older community members uh, than what there are with the younger community members. So, you know, let's not focus on young kids. We have a problem with drugs right across our community, and some of them are illicit, and some of them are prescribed. So it's not just focusing on kids. But look, where we can make it safer for those who do choose to consume illicit substances, substances and, sa and save lives in this process, we must make the necessary changes, and that's what this bill is about. Uh, pill testing is one way that the Allen Labor government is committed to saving lives across the state and helping people make better and more informed um, decisions surrounding illicit drug consumption. And that's the whole idea that through this pill testing process, it's not just about testing the drug, it's about assisting them and educating and informing them about the risk. Uh, and also trying to provide other additional supports. Uh, so that's what this pill testing bill is about, but that's what the process is about. And that's engaging with these people that are taking and, and you know, um, trialling these drugs. And of course, we don't know uh, with the synthetic drugs that are around today, we don't know what's contained in those drugs. And again, the pill testing regime will sort that out for us, we hope. But I want to extend my thanks uh, to the Minister for Mental Health, Minister Stitt in the other place, and of course the Premier for the fantastic work on this bill and bringing this bill forward. I also want to extend my gratitude to um, all of the health unions that are supportive of this bill. HACSU, uh, the ANMF, the Victorian Ambulance Union, the AMA, they have all supported this pill testing bill uh, because they know, and of course their professions are all about helping and saving people. That's what they do, that's their job. Uh, and they see the difference every day in their working careers around the fine line between life and death. And if we can prevent younger people, generally speaking, who are pill popping, uh, if we can prevent them from dying, uh, then this bill will be very successful. Um, as I said earlier, it's also about providing other information to, with these uh, people that are engaging in this practice uh, with the information that can inform them and they can then make a value judgement on whether they continue the practice or not. We know that drug taking is um, a high risk action. Um, and in 2023 alone, you know, we saw 547 Victorians uh, died from drug overdoses. Uh, and that's the second highest annual figure that we've seen. And we're trying to stamp out, you know, drug taking alone. It just, we, we're not going to stop that. Um, but we can assist in other ways um, through this bill. And of course, you know, if you compare the 547 deaths in 2023, um, that's a lot higher than what the road toll deaths were in the same year. Uh, and we have accepted that our road toll deaths are too high, uh, and time and time again, to, we've tried to implement measures that uh, encourage our road users to drive a lot safer. So we've put a lot of time, effort and money into road safety to prevent death, uh, and this is an avenue for our government to prevent death through people um, you know, trialling uh, the drug or the pills that they're taking, but also the dangerous um, uh, synthetic drugs that are being created now. Uh, and you know, people, you know, con contributions were uh, put up yesterday in regard to fentanyl and nitazines and things like that that are on the market now and coming into this country. Uh, really highly potent drugs. Uh, and as I say, uh, they can change a person's life within a matter of seconds. And it's only by sheer luck that some of those people um, will survive the taking of those drugs because others will assist in resuscitating them and bringing them back to life. So it's a fine line. Um, as I say, I mean, it's not a great experience uh, resuscitating someone, especially a young person uh, that you know has caused harm to themselves. Um, you never forget it, and I know the member for Footscray um, raised the experience that she had when she stumbled across a young man under a tree. And thank God that she did stumble across him, um, because I can tell you what, uh, in my experiences, he's probably alive today because of that stumble. 
and that's what's important. We all need to have a go and support these kids and trying to stop them taking the drugs, but if they are taking them, um, this pill testing bill will assist them in the future. Thank you.